Okay, so let's begin. Today we're going to be have about numerical differentiation. Uh, where is this? Well, anyway, numerical differentiation. So some of this will be known to, I hope, most of you. But let's do a quick review. So, numerical differentiation. So this will have many applications in whichever engineering field you're going to. You are going to solve some kind of ordinary differential equation or partial or differential equation in general. Um, so they're, they are doing basically numerical differentiation. So how do you do this in a good way? Well, we can start with the definition of the uh, derivative. It should be known. So the derivative of a function f x by x is, well, some kind of limit between two points of function arbitrarily close. That is what this means. So you basically look at the change. But the problem is we can't really do this on a computer. First because we don't, well, I guess the only reason is that we can't have some number approach zero. That is not yet possible. So in uh, computers we need a small h. But we can't have it arbitrarily small, which we'll go to later. So you have to, find, you have to kind of fine tune this h in order to get the best numerical differentiation some competing kind of forces or error terms in this. So in um, the computer, we have to discretize it. In or on the computer. That is fairly straightforward. Basically, say that derivative of f of x approximately equal to, well, f of x plus h minus the preceding point. And what we'll call this d plus. So we have an operator here. Call this d, big D plus of x. So that is, in this case, we're going forward. We're looking ahead of us. So that's what this means. So plus h. h is always. Um, for some h larger than zero, so h is always positive, but it's a small number. So since this is a positive number, we're looking ahead of us, and then this is the point we're at, and we look at the change. So let's see if this actually works. First start with the function f of x, x, one, two, polar, this is my function now, straight line, like so, okay, so, I try to evaluate the function of one and two. In this case, h is one from there. Uh, 
and there. Okay, so now H is just one. Let's see if this works. So P plus X uh, and X is one. Well, then it's f of x plus h, h is 1, so then it's basically 2 minus 1 divided by 1, so it's f of x there. And this should be 1. And all of you know that the derivative, the analytical derivative of this function is always 1. It works in this case. But if you try a more, well, we'll call it complicated function, nonlinear function, then we are into trouble. So x squared. Points. One, two, one, four. So f of two is four. And h. H X So that's this stands. Okay, so if you just try to apply this, you see it doesn't at all. Two, one and one minus one. What is the analytical solution here? Well, uh, yes. So, I mean, 2x and we're at 1, so it doesn't work. So, how to remedy this? We could have used a smaller h, then it would be better. So, there's one way of doing it. So, here we are looking forward. We can also look backwards. And, for reason's sake, let's just write it up. That is the that is the word. I can call this the mm, excuse me the minus f x. Divided by like so. So then we're looking behind us. And then it begs to differ that maybe we can look both ways. And that would give us a better estimate. And actually, here you can look many steps ahead and many steps behind and combine them and get more and more accurate answers. So again, I'm going to test through with my GitHub where this file is. So if you want to take a look at this later, please do. So uh, in this code, this is called a live script from MATLAB, so it should be interactive. But I, I've al already created started. So we can just run this first section, and you see the step length is one. Uh, I've started with zero and then one. And I create my kind of axis or discretized grid, uh, which is this. So this one goes from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 9, 10. Same with the grid. And doing this for all the 
potions. So this is just one all over the endless one. If we try to do it with x squared, yes, we can also try with a smaller h and see if we get a better result. But for step length, one, this. But put this back to one. Notice. So So this is forward differentiation. So you can notice this kind of kink here. That's because we can't really calculate the forward differenti uh, differential of this point because we don't have any more. But then it kind of stops. So that's why there's a kink here. And you will see this a lot. Again, have both of them, and you can see it in both the backwards and forwards. When the backwards, you will have this kink in the start because at the first point you can't look behind you, and in the forward one, well, you can't look forward. You and you also see that they give different results. So if I had gone up again and reduced the step length, these would eventually converge. But what if we just take the average of them at once? So oh, this is called central difference. But, oh, I mean, it's, it's also here, but let's do it on a blackboard instead. So we're forward, we're backward, we're central. Sometimes you can't use um, the central one, I mean, if you are looking in time, you don't know what the function is going to be ahead of time. So then you're stuck with backward. You can only look backwards in time. But you can also look far uh, backwards in time. Let's just see where it is. So, central difference. Central difference. Well, I'm going to call it the zero x. Oh, x h f of x minus divided by. So, how did I get this? And this is then going to be more accurate. That's what I'm postulating. It's going to be more accurate, both the backwards and forwards. I mean, there are some edge cases, but yeah. But how to find this? So let's see. If I try to look at f x plus h, and I tailor expand this, that's a should be a known trick now. I will see that with tailor expansion, we can make more accurate. Uh, differenti uh, differentiation operators. F of x plus h. Differentiate it one time. Squared to factorial or facultet in Norwegian. Going this faculty all uh, well, last year. Anyway. And I'm one more term, h3 three over 3 factorial f3 times differentiated, and so on. And again, h 
it will be fairly similar, only with some different signs here and there. X plus h squared over factorial f x minus three factorial factorial f three and x. And then you see here, because they are changing terms, you see that these these two cancel. Not more of them. You see, by using this ex expression, we can find the forward one. By using this, we find the backwards one. So, x plus basically minus h f. Yes. This one, rearrange it a bit. Get that h times x differentiated is approximately equal to f of x minus f of x plus h plus g factorial. And we get, so we divide by minus h, and we end up with x, and we are where we started this lecture today. So f of x, only that now we also have an error term, h, and we also divide by one h there, so we are left with some kind of term, O, a big O, H. So we assume H is small. So this is accurate linear. So a bigger, so if we had H to the power of two, this would be more accurate. As a small number to the power of two is even smaller. That's how you have to think about it. Again, b, b minus, oh, I guess I need to write it up, f x minus f x minus h, h, and we end up with the same accuracy term or error term. We then try to look at the, uh, well, subtract, because it's this one from this one, we get the central one. F of x plus h minus f of x minus h is going to be H, F, X, plus U, H, to the power of 3, divided by 3, F, X, minus 2, 3. So, since I take, I subtract this one, the sign changes, so these two cancel. Then we get f of x plus h minus x minus h h, and now the accuracy term or error term is h to the power of two. It's more accurate, but you won't be able to calculate the derivative in the end. Which is a small drawback. So, 
just to illustrate this. with the central one we end up somewhere in between but we have these kinks both in the start and then the end and since this is accurate to the power of two this should be able to approximate x, uh, the uh, derivative of x squared completely except in the endpoints. So if you have a very simple polynomial, you don't need to apply that much of force. Or, but right now we looked at x plus h and x minus h. We can add, keep adding terms. Uh, so if you have a keen eye, you see we can look at f of x plus 2h but there's one more trick to this. I assume most of this is, is known, so just stop me if it isn't. Stopping for questions, unless you ask me to. Here we go. And then we'll look at the sums. So if you then try to stutter the sums or well differences. Minus f of x h, you already know this. F3 gonna skip the X um, two, H, five trial factorial F times X X plus two H and F of minus H. And what we're after here is F differentiated one time. So we don't want to eliminate this term. That's 16 1 over plural F1 3 plus 4 5 5 plural again X. We don't care about what's in front of this term, and also not this term. If we can eliminate it, that would be even better. But we see that we can actually eliminate this term. If we multiply this equation by eight, 
and subtract it from this, we can get an even more accurate expression. All the way to the h to the power of four divided by. We take h times this, and this one times two, eight, one minus two. I, I just number them. So equation number one and equation number two. We have eight of this. Because if we're multiplying it by eight, these coefficients line up. So two times eight is 16. So if I then take eight times of this, and uh, now if I take this and minus this eight times of this, this term will disappear. You could also do it the other way around. You would just get a different line in front of this, and then you would solve it going ahead. Up with eight with f of x plus eight minus x h H minus F of X minus H and that we end up twelve F once minus forty eight Minus factorial five times over x. Solving this, we get an expression. Hmm. H F X minus eight plus oh no plus F of X plus H plus F H two steps ahead divided by twelve. Error term here, well, four. But you see here we need more function evaluations in order to do this. So it's more computationally intensive. You can expand this to infinity, like a thousand terms. Then you need a lot of data, and you also need to do a lot of computations. So you don't really gain that much by it. You have to be conservative. And the software we use now, we use a length of 16. So we have 16 numbers for this. That's for solving the wave equation. Good compromise for that. So this one has a length of four, or half length, depending on how it basically means the same. But you see, if you are looking at x, then you can take two steps to this side and two steps to that side. You say that the length is four or five if you're being pedantic. Because you are, mm, yeah. How all of this appears.
was that too quick or okay so here we're looking at the amazing function f to the power of five Oh. Okay, so let's just disregard that and we'll try to I don't have time to edit the code right now. Anyway, let's take a look. So uh disregard this. This is actually five. Uh, 5x to the power of 4. It's just I haven't updated the legend down here. I'll try to do this later. So here you have the different ways we've been looking at now. We have the analytical blue line, we have the forward one, kind of overshoots a good bit. We have the backwards one, also undershoots a bit. If we try to take the central one, well, Still overshoots a bit, but it's a lot more accurate. And then we see the central four, which, well, looking at it very uh, strictly mathematical, is perfect. And you see it does kind of line up, except in the last couple of points here, because we don't have enough information. So we just said that oh, just take the last uh, last value you have, extrapolate it. Kind of a shortcut. And this is kind of very simple equations, but when you have ordinary differential equations, you don't have always have an analytical solution, and then you need to do it like this. Or you can't find an analytical solution. error analysis. So I mentioned earlier that we have two main contributors to error, and that is round of error and also the step length. So this um, error term here, the big O for four, that's from the math. But we also have the computer can't represent floating point numbers with infinite precision. So we lose some accuracy there as well. So we'll take a look at this. So if the uh, computers were infinitely accurate, we could just uh, decrease this h, and we will then get infinite accuracy. We can't, uh, unless we define our own way of uh, handling numbers. But floating point or double floating point is the most Yes. Yes, I will say that when I use the presentation f of x zero minus h, it's going to be y minus 1 is what I've been calling it, e minus 1. So this is what the computer represents, and this is the error. Again, f x 0 plus h. This bit here, we call it a round of error. So 
and that's due to how numbers are presented in the computer. Oh, um, Okay, so what is the round of error? To repeat myself, it's a computer that can't represent numbers infinitely accurate. So if we take a look at the second order central difference, we get expressions. Zero equals one plus Minus one H plus B plus one B minus one H minus squared factorial. Zero. So see, we get this length of term. And we call this the round H patient error. H. So the total error is just on the sum of these. And then you can notice the big O dependency. Ah, right, so this is the round of error, and this is the truncation error. And that's just the total error, as we say. Um, when you actually do this, you will take the absolute value of both of them. The error h going to be if you add the round of errors to h squared factorial times. So then we see that this first term adds. What's the word for it? Proportional to one of h, and this term is proportional to h squared. So, see that if h is very, very, very small, this term will call the round of error. Those will dominate. But if h is a larger number, then h squared will dominate. One over one over H. Going to be squared. You see, you want to be now. 
there should be a bubble. So we want to pick here. Show it and I better plot later. So we want we want to pick here, here H. So how do we actually do this? Well, first, we're going to assume that the round of errors, they are approximates, that they are the same, basically. So, ah, ah we'll do this after the break instead. So I can just show the, uh, how they look like now. So here I've basically just find a run of error. I will do the math on the blackboard next lecture. Um, and well, different. Okay, so the h small. Well, while well, the h goes from almost zero to four, ten to the power of five. See here we have the run of error. Skyrock splits or very small h. And the truncation error slowly increases or large. So we want to find around this H here would be optimal in our case for the sum of them. But how do we find it? Uh, questions before the break? They seem fairly simple. Good. Well, uh, 15 minute break then.